Last week, world leaders moved closer to a pandemic treaty that would hand sovereign power to the unelected World Health Organization. This is the treaty we've been discussing and warning about. It will give the WHO the power to supersede your country's own government um, and their laws about pandemic rules and more. It is a huge power grab. We've seen these screenshots and we're going to review them in a minute. This will dictate this will allow the WHO to dictate what is a pandemic who has to lock down, vaccines, masking. It will also let them track and monitor you, define infodemics if you're sharing things it thinks could be dangerous. Even they have said, we've shown you this, even true concepts that are being shared out, out online that could, they could think are dangerous, they would call that an infodemic and they'd have the power to censor and monitor you. We've shown you this, okay? You can rewind the tape, just search it on any platform that you're watching us, WHO, it's there. But I'm gonna show you a few more in a second. Now, first, the update, because last week the UN General Assembly happened and world leaders voted to pass what they're calling a political declaration to pass this pandemic preparedness. So it's not actually that they passed the pandemic treaty because then we'd all be in it now. They collectively passed a political declaration to pass it. Why did they need to do this? I'm gonna explain it to you in a second, but watch. I'm not getting audio. I, I don't hear the sound hear either. either. <laughs> Sorry, that was me. Let me let me play that again. Okay, okay. it's short. We're gonna play it let again. Me. Sorry. I will then Whoop. submit for the formal consideration of the assembly. It is adopted. Okay. So did that gavel scare you? It did scare me because I've read the documents. Uh, now, again, this doesn't mean the treaty has passed. It means that the countries have committed to passing it in sort of a loose kind of way. Now, the reason they did this is because countries have been showing hesitation to hand over their sovereignty. Debates have been raging in U.S. Congress, in Parliament, in the U.K., in other places. And so they sort of shoved this in like, we're going to get there. We're going to we're going to do this. Uh, watch the head of the WHO. He calls himself Dr. Tedros um, talking about this declaration. First, I would like to start by thanking the president and all member states for endorsing the political declaration. This is a very historic day and thank you so much indeed. Thank you, Mr. President. We may be tempted to think that the COVID-19 pandemic is history. But history teaches us that COVID-19 will not be the last pandemic. The question we all face is whether we will be ready when the next one arrives. As leaders, we have a collective responsibility to make sure we are ready. Mm -hmm. All right, right, collective, he says. Does anyone believe that? But this is not a collective measure. It's an autocratic measure. Right. It gives him and his organization of diplomats who don't even play, pay taxes in any given place, um, they give him powers powers that he already he already has a lot of powers, right? So recently, an American doctor, Dr. Meryl Nass, warned about this in a EU parliamentary meeting. She's been labeled as an extremist for saying this, but we have shown you these documents, you guys, and we regularly link them to you in our newsletter so that you can read them yourself. This is not a conspiracy interpretation. Watch how she warns about this, and then I'm going to bring you more about her in a second. We're undergoing a soft coup and the idea is to create a whole new set of laws and ignore the existing human rights laws and other laws under the pretext of pandemic preparedness and the biosecurity agenda. The WHO is developing through all its nations, but with the WHO directorate in the United States in charge, a pandemic treaty and amendments to the existing international health regulations that will remove the human rights protections currently um, embedded in the IHRs, will enforce surveillance, censorship, get rid of freedom of speech, require governments to censor and only
only push a single narrative. Also, we will be sub subject, if, if they can make this work, to vaccines developed in 100 days, which the organization CEPI is planning to do. And one of the people who founded CEPI was Jeremy Farrar, who is now the chief scientist at the WHO to bring this forward. Um, other things that, uh, that amendments do is to bind the state so they are no longer recommendations, but enforceable edicts, uh, provide a liability shield, get rid of intellectual property rights, move supplies from one country to another, um, enforce digital passports, and the director general of WHO can demand that a pandemic or a potential pandemic exists. He can just declare it with no standards, and then countries around the world will have to obey. Uh, also, the WHO will tell you what drugs you can and can't use in your nation once a pandemic is declared. Obviously, the budget will increase. Um, One Health is another part of this. One Health is a concept that was created to enable the WHO, with these documents, to take over jurisdiction of everything in the world by saying that climate change, animals, plants, water systems, ecosystems are all central to health. Also embedded in this concept is a peculiar notion that humans are no longer of greater value than animals. Okay, she's not wrong. We have shown you every single screenshot of what she says. She's not making this up. Now, she mentioned Jeremy Farrar. Um, now, it, you may remember that he is one of the scientists who worked with Dr. Fauci before he got this WHO job to doctor the nature paper that said that COVID did not come from a lab. He's one of those dudes. He's what they call the Maryland boys. Okay. So what's interesting about this is that no one's here saying, did the WHO do a good job with rules and recommendations around the pandemic? I don't think anyone could argue that they did. Uh, so, okay. They should be rewarded, right? Um, this Maryland boy, these Fauci boys, should they be rewarded with more power? having done this to this paper? Well, no one seems to be bothered otherwise. A little bit of context about Dr. Nass. She was suspended in Maine by the Medical Licensing Board because she was critical of the vaccine and had recommended during the pandemic alternative treatments to COVID, such as the hydro, I'm not gonna say it because there still are rules around what we cannot say, um, she has sued the medical board, though. She wants them to apologize and retract their position, and she wants punitive damages, meaning she wants them to pay the, her as punishment to compensate what she lost and for violating her rights as a medical professional and as an American. Now, incidentally, the drug that she suggested for COVID, um, I'm going to decide not to show this screenshot. Should I show it? or Probably not. Okay, we're not going to show it. Um well, I want to tell you this, that the Mayo Clinic now recommends that treatment, the hydro something something that I'm not going to take a chance of saying. Yeah, because um, when we say it on YouTube, they um, it's a violation of their terms of service. So maybe now YouTube will update their terms of service. Given that Mayo Clinic yeah. says that this is actually a legitimate uh, and valid way to treat the virus. Yeah. Go ahead, Philip. You want to ring in on that? Oh, I was just going to say what they they what they they actually what they tag us on is they'll they say it's uh, uh, promoting dangerous information. That's basically like they're we're, we're promoting harm. Okay. Right. So right. what they're, I'm they're telling you, yeah. right? So what I'm telling you is Mayo Clinic now says that that is a valid way to treat COVID. But anyone who has said that before has been dinged or demonetized. This woman was delicensed. So not allowed to practice medicine. Um, now, the WHO, though, still does not recommend this hydro drug that we're talking about. So under this pandemic treaty, the Mayo Clinic can say we've seen science that shows that this is an effective treatment to COVID. And the WHO can say, nope, we're not buying it. You do what we say instead. No diversity of thought here. And so you don't get to choose what doctor you think is really has, you know, 
your best interest, you will do what they say. Um, now, the media wants you to think that this WHO will take power, global power, is a crazy conspiracy theory. Here is the Associated Press saying that this is not really binding. It doesn't sign over U.S. sovereignty. You can all calm down. Um, that's not actually the case. This is conspiracy theory. Again, we've shown you this. We've shown you the drafts. The AP News Verification Seal of Approval. The Associated Press, the mouthpiece of the deep state. Says that it's fine. Right. Um, even just today, I was listening to an NPR piece about this passing mm. of the political treaty that the UN passed last week. And... Uh, NPR said the reporter says they had to do this because discussions for the pandemic treaty were not going so well. And then they played a clip from a doctor who was like, it was going to be great. I mean, we could be prepared for pandemics. We could force people to take vaccines. We could force lockdowns. We could force masking. It's going to be great. That's why. But it's too bad it's going so poorly that people are not for it. So you can see the media is for it. The pandemic preparedness treaty. Um, but lest they call us conspiracy theorists, I'm just going to show you these few edits. I'm not going to repeat myself for, to all the things we've seen together. Uh, but this is the edits to the WHO international health regulation that they did this year. They made these changes in order to prepare for this pandemic treaty that they want. We went over this in May of this year. You can already see how it's going based on this edit saying that the WHO standing recommend recommendation used to mean non-binding advice. Oh no, strike that. The temporary recommendation means advice. It's not non-binding anymore, you guys. Why would they take those out? You can see where this is going. If your country signs this, it is binding. Uh, now, does this only kick in when we're in a pandemic? No, it kicks in whenever they feel like we're in a pandemic. Take a look at this scope. It says it will help them prevent, prepare, control, provide interna international spread of disease advice, including through health system readiness and resilience in ways that are commensurate with and restricted to all risks with a potential to impact public health, all risks, not just health related, but like information we've told you about um, and which avoid unnecessary interference with international traffic and trade livelihoods human rights equitable access to health products and healthcare technologies and know-how so this is like not just your health care but also trade like they could say we think that you know like the dutch farmers we think that these cows being next to these rivers may present a pandemic. So we're going to have to take away the cows and the food and the industry and all of that stuff. They have laid it out in their own documents. So even though many governments are taking a beat and considering not signing this, the United Nations moved the ball down the field last week at the UN General Assembly with this political treaty. So you better tell your politicians if you don't like this while you still can. Yeah. That's all I got for you on that. Please do. And this is an opportunity, guys. I mean, this stuff is slipping away from us and it's happening right before our eyes. And it, it may be or the fact that the media is presenting this as if the pandemic treaty is slipping away from them may be that there is movement, that global governments are being told by their constituents they don't want this. And maybe it is withering on the vine. So keep talking. Yeah. Keep talking. Keep pressing your local representatives about it, no matter where you live. This is not just a United States issue at all. Uh, this is a global issue. I mean, we've shown you their proposal for monitoring you for vaccine passports, for monitoring infodemics. The infodemic screen even said that an infodemic could be caused by even true information. So there's an attack on truth here, you guys. So you got to speak up. You got to share this and speak up or else this will be the law that we all have to live in. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.